We can reconvene our meeting. Uh, we've been in executive session since 6 o'clock to discuss some personnel matters. We can all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We can have introductions. Dave Hurst. Chris Meyer. Willow Bear. Wendy Sampson. Jody Monroe. Holly Dellenbaugh. Meredith Moriarty. Christine Beck. And Judy Kehoe. And uh, Mr. Fishbein is not able to be here tonight. Uh, for any um, PIG students that we have out there in the audience, uh, your obligation is to stay until the meeting is over or until 9 o'clock, whichever comes first. Um, and then there are sign out sheets all around the table, you should come up and sign out. Um, and if you need a signature from a board member on a piece of paper that you have or on your notebook or whatever, just ask any of us, okay? Um, before we get started, we'd like to thank uh, Glenmont for hosting us today. Um, we're always uh, excited to come around and go to all the different schools. First up is approval of the minutes of the September 4th, uh, 2019 regular board meeting. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the minutes from the September 4th, 2019 regular board meeting. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That passes. Do we have anybody here tonight from the Student Senate? If you can come up to the microphone and just state your name. I'm Isabella Maritato. I'm the Secretary of Student Senate. Um, this week we're working on freshman elections, so the new freshman will be elected next week, probably September 24th. We're still working out the exact dates. Um, the petitions, I believe, are due tomorrow, so that's one thing we're working on. The backpack program, which we have done for a few years now, we are starting to pack the bread and all the items in the bags this Friday. Um, and the third thing that we are doing is we are having a blood drive at the high school. So this week we have been doing sign-ups and getting students to write their name, their homeroom, their information, and just telling them about the blood drive. So that is happening sometime next week, and that's all I have for you guys. Thank you. Is the uh, blood drive open to the public? I believe so, yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, next is our superintendent's report. Uh, Thank you. Uh, so I have a few announcements. I wanted to announce uh, we have a former uh, Syracuse University softball and a Bethlehem High School alum, uh, Mary Beth Dombrowski, who was a part of the class of 2011, who was elected into the New York State High School Hall of Fame as part of the class of 2020. And we also had uh, Kristen Armstrong, who's one of our middle school science teacher, who uh, right around the same time was recently elected into the New York State High School Soccer Hall of Fame. So it was interesting they both were nominated at the same time. Um, I also wanted to let the board know that um, every year the board has to approve the district safety plan and we got some additional guidance on that. So we have the plan ready, but it has to go through a 30-day public comment period. So we'll post that after tonight's meeting letting people know that it's available for public comment. And then 30 days after that, the board will have to um, approve that plan. The building level plans are not public, so the principals manage those uh, with state ed. Um, also, construction update. Um, not much has changed since our last meeting. Uh, the new bleachers and the press box were ready um, on schedule for the first home game on September 6th. The high school pool will be open for use on Friday, and uh, the first home meet is September 26. The varsity baseball field renovations continue uh, for preparation in spring. The new dugouts are just about complete, and they're doing some of the uh, groundwork. Everything else, uh, the cafeteria at the high school, the auditorium, and the library are pretty much on schedule. We had facilities committee meeting uh, just before this meeting. The library is a, a little more delayed than we had originally anticipated, so we're thinking that will be open around the end of November mm -hmm. um, or beginning of December. Also, we had a school start time meeting 
Um, Monday night uh, this week we had consultants from uh, school bus consultants attended and they presented uh, their findings. So I know Wendy was there uh, and Jonathan was there, so I'm sure they'll add to that. But essentially, uh, they had put together a report. I think all the board received that report as well. So if you have questions, we could probably answer those. Um, essentially, they had looked at about 14 or 15 different options from the data that they collected, the meetings they had with staff, students, um, and parents, and from that, took all of that and put four formal proposals for the committee to just uh, look at and review during that meeting. Um, and during the course of the meeting, we had a lot of discussion, we had a lot of questions. They did find some um, areas that we could improve efficiencies within our transportation department, so they'll be following up with uh, them. We met with the transportation staff. Um, and then the committee essentially asked them to um, take really two, it sounded like people were more in favor of two of the proposals, maybe a third one, there was one that really wasn't feasible, and to work with transportation, rerouting, ridership, making those efficiencies, and they would put that together and come back in December or January with option one would look like this with new routing and ridership data. Mm -hmm. Option two would look like this, so that way the committee would have a better sense of where we had some flexibility. Um, they're also going to come back. I plan to have the committee reconvene in probably early November, where in the meantime, we will look at some of those models and what that might look like for the high school schedule or middle school schedules, bring that back to the committee to take a look at. Um, so we're hoping by January sometimes we might have a better idea of what option or a couple options we may want to move forward with with the community. Um, so I don't know if Wendy, if you wanted to add it all to that. Yeah, there um, there seemed to be a lot of uh, good discussion about the benefits of many of the different you know plans and trying to have the least amount of disruption but maximize benefits for the most number of students. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what we were aiming at. Yeah, one of the things that was uh, discussed and was part of the reason for their proposals that they put together is we can have middle school and high school routes overlapping because we have a lot less kids riding the buses at secondary, but you can't really overlap those with the elementary runs because we have, we, we have much uh, more use of buses and transportation in the elementary. So, um, so those, those kind of have to stay separate. So, um, so that's my report. I don't know if anyone has questions. Yeah. No, I just want to thank the district for looking into this because this is a, a movement that is, you know, it, it's a real movement that we are, you know, being proactive on and and looking into. And I, um, it's going to be moving through the capital district, and, and yeah. the, the fact that we are, you know, one of the first schools, first suburban schools, to be really looking at it in depth is is wonderful. So thank you. Any other questions or discussion? Uh, next is the uh, the board report. Um, as uh, was mentioned, the facilities committee met um, just before the meeting tonight um, to go over some of the uh, change orders with respect to the, the construction. Um, and the policy committee meeting uh, is set for Monday, this coming Monday. Um, Christine, I don't know if you want to add anything about the facilities committee meeting. Just that we are going to put updates on the website. They'll be coming um, just to let the community know where we are in the schedule and that we're going to do everything we can to stay as cl close to schedule as possible and the delays have been mm -hmm. discussed and addressed and we want to get everything up and running as soon as possible for the students as well. So just to let the community and the students know that we're working to do that. <coughs> Does anybody have something else? I attended the varsity football game, uh, the Shen one, a couple weeks ago, and the really nice thing was the, the stands were packed. Uh, there were the student participation there um, was, was wonderful. Um, they've switched sides, now they're down at the other end, but um, 
they were able to fill the stands, and um, uh, it was just just a nice community event. So it was very very encouraging. Anybody else? Then uh, next up is our presentation. Members of the Board of Education, Superintendent Monroe, and all of our guests, uh, welcome to Glenmont Elementary School. We're pleased that we're holding our board meeting here at our school. My name is Laura Heffernan, and I am the principal here. And tonight, I will be presenting on promoting equity, diversity, and inclusivity at BC, along with our Assistant Superintendent of Instruction, Dave Hurst, who has been an instrumental leader in um, this program here at Bethlehem for the past several years. So to start, just a reminder about our district mission and the four core values that we have here. This presentation and this, this topic obviously falls under the character um, umbrella, but it, it certainly is one that actually, I think, permeates all of, of everything that we do here at Bethlehem. So it could, it could actually be encompassed by all of these. So good evening. One of the um, things that we've noticed immediately upon embarking upon this work is the changing demographics um, in the United States. And in a second, we're gonna look at what the demographics look like at Glenmont. And although uh, most of the Bethlehem schools do not mirror the national um, profile, it's important to understand that when students leave Bethlehem, they're not always going to stay within this community, right? When students go off to college or go get a job or enter the military, right? These are the realities that they're going to face if they move away. Right, so um, it's important that students understand and can appreciate different cultures and different ethnicities um, and different values. And that's really um, been the focus of our work. So you can see that Glenmont, although its demographics are changing, just 10 years ago it was 87% white. Um, it's now 80% white. And our um, English language learner population um, has remained somewhat flat, but at the same time, the number of languages has certainly increased over time. And why this is important is when you take a look at the, the national demographics and even the demographics within Bethlehem, um, this does not, our teaching faculty do not mirror our students, right? And you can take a look, at, um, just looking at the red section alone, right? The, the percentage of white teachers versus the percentage of white students um, is far different. Right? So it's not uncommon for a student to go their entire academic career only experiencing, say, white female teachers. Whereas when you go out into the world, obviously you're not only going to experience white females in your everyday life. Right? So it's important that we recognize this and figure out ways to, through our activities, through our curriculum, through our discussions, right, to bring other cultures and other um, aspects of what our community as a whole looks like into what we're doing. So yes, this is about race, but there's a lot of other issues that we are looking to address as well to make sure that everyone at Bethlehem, whether you're a student, staff member, or community member, that you feel included and represented and, and, and that we're paying attention to um, how we're, we're interacting with everyone. So these are some of the different um, areas that we looked at and obviously this list is not all inclusive but you know just to make sure that this is this is an, it, it includes so many different things so to address this the district we created a new committee on equity we called it in 2017-18 school year and dave led that work um, to identify areas to improve support for diverse students and to also increase awareness for unconscious bias that we may have um, this, this committee met several times throughout the year. We had some guest speakers come in to educate us on, on current issues and topics. And we also had a lot of great discussions about where we should be headed as a district and what our work could involve. We also collected evidence from the district and from our, our students, for example, through a, the district climate survey. Some of those questions were very telling. Um, students at Bethlehem do not all get along well with each other or feel they do not get along well with each other. They don't all feel socially accepted. And 
some students feel that they are teased or picked on about their race or ethnicity, or they watch other students being teased or picked on about their race or ethnicity. So we have a lot of work to do, and this helped to inform us with our decisions moving forward. So the Committee on Equity actually expanded, and in doing so, we also expanded the name to make sure that we were um, being clear with our intentions. Um, we made sure that we had representatives from all of the different schools here at Bethlehem and that it was K-12. And we've been doing a lot of talking in the committee and planning and educating ourselves as well as um, promoting this work and, and, and spreading it out to the rest of our staff and faculty. Some of the things we did include a transgender issue um, presentation for middle school and high school faculty, which our elementary student uh, faculty will be exposed to in the future. We had workshops during the superintendent's conference day. Um, we've updated our hiring practices, and we are continuing to look at ways to make sure that our curriculum, our materials, our policy, everything reflects um, the diversity that it should. So as I said, we created this, we expanded this committee, and in doing so, we, we made sure that we had a mission statement. Bethlehem School District is committed to supporting an environment in which all members of our school community feel free to engage as their authentic selves in an atmosphere of mutual respect and civility. And this is what we believe in and what we would like to aspire to as a district. So as Laura mentioned, one of the areas that we focused on was um, our hiring guidelines. And this was sort of in line with um, some of the realizations we had about the teaching faculty not mirroring the student population, right? And, and some of that comes from, um, you know, biases that we might have. Something as simple as when, you, you know, when you're looking to hire somebody, a real common phrase that you hear, um, not just here, but in, in many hiring practices, well, that person's just not a good fit, right? It sounds reasonable to think like that, but what you're really saying is we want to continue to employ people that already look just like us. We don't want people that are going to push our boundaries or that are going to make us think in different ways. So one of the things we've done is we're really putting an effort on um, trying to interview and trying to hire folks that don't think like us, right, to expand what it is that we're all about. Um, so that's just one simple way in which we've changed um, our interview practice, is our um, screening practices, and then our selection practices. We've also taken a look at, and this came up um, in our new code of conduct, um, getting away from sort of the traditional model of um, punishing for poor behavior um, as opposed to restorative justice practices which are more about teaching and um, helping students understand why the decisions they make are not necessarily the appropriate ones and how they can act better uh, moving forward you know a real simple example of this right is when students struggle in math class we typically bring them in and give them extra help right when students are struggling in English class we bring them in for extra help when students are struggling with behavior we punish them, right? Why aren't we using the same model? So we're really starting to take a close look at when students are struggling with behavior, just like we would help them with math or English, we're going to help them with behavior, right? The first reaction can't be punish, right? And this is definitely a shift, right? So for folks that don't understand the difference between, right, punishment and consequence, right? We're get, trying to get away from the idea that every time someone does something, misbehaves, or makes a poor decision, right, just because you're not being punished doesn't mean there was not a consequence. So we're really moving towards a more um, proactive and restorative approach and getting away from sort of a reactionary punishment approach. We keep going. All right. So one of the reasons, um, so we've done this work for two years now, and we had, you know, spent a lot of time meeting. We brought in some outside consultants. And the more we dug into this work, the more we realized th there's no way we can do this work on our own, right? We, we certainly don't have the internal capacity to um, be able to know everything we need to know to move this work forward. So we interviewed several different outside companies that specialize in this work. And we eventually chose Generation Ready is the name of the company that's coming in to do work with us. And the reason we chose them is they were the one group that was really focused on addressing all areas of equity and inclusivity and diversity, right? Many of the ones that we looked at were very narrow, right? They only looked at race or they only looked at economics. 
um, whereas Generation Ready really looks at all different forms of um, equity, diversity, and inclusivity. So that's the reason we chose them. And these are their six sort of hallmarks, right? They're essential practices for effective schools. And these are the things that we're beginning to work through with this organization. We met twice this summer, um, two full day, we did two full day mo training modules with them. We have another full day with them tomorrow. And then we'll have um, some follow up sessions. Um, I think I'll speak to that a little bit more on the next slide. But basically, what they're working with us on is this idea of cultural proficiency. And the one thing that we're very quickly realizing, right, is that this is an ongoing process. You're never done with this, right? So it's, it's a continual dialogue. It's a continual training. It's a continually taking a look at your curriculum. It's a continual taking a look at the walls within your schools, right? There's a lot that goes on um, with this work. So as I said, there are eight modules total. We'll, at, after tomorrow, we'll have completed three of them. And when I say we, there's about 35 of us on the committee. Um, every building, every level has representation. Uh, we have social workers, counselors, teachers, principals, um, central administration. So it, it's a very well-rounded group. Um, we started with 35, and then as this work expands, we'll be able to take the 35 that are going through this initial work, and they'll be able to um, advance this even further. Um, so as I said, we completed the two modules in August. School equity walks, I sort of alluded to this. This is where, so one of the things this company does is they come in and they'll spend a day in a school and they'll walk and they'll interview with people looking at what types of things are hanging on the walls. What type of students do they represent? What kind of materials do you have available in the library? What kind of materials do you have available throughout your curriculum? Um, to try to get a gauge for um, you know, the, the scope and the range of the materials that you're using and whether or not they represent all types of students, regardless of whether those types of students exist in your buildings or not, right? Because as I said, we're not always going to be in this little small world, right? We're going to eventually have to move around and that's when you're going to be exposed um, to many different um, aspects of human life, right? So clearly we've, uh, we've been putting a lot of time and effort and energy into this. It's something that's very important to us as a district. Um, we're going to continue the work with Generation Ready with this rollout and eventually spread it with the rest of the faculty and staff. Um, we're also going to continue to track data to see how we're doing. Are we making progress? What else, are, what else do we need to do? What, where are our weak areas? And of course, professional development, not just with Generation Ready, but all kinds of different professional development. And I, I imagine as we continue with Generation Ready, we might find some other ways that we might have um, for future plans. So um, that is all about how we're going to try to make a difference here at BC for something that's very important. Thank you. Does the board have any questions for us? I just want to thank you for doing the work and for doing the presentation because this is such an important issue. I just wanted, and I did want to follow up to, to let the community know that tomorrow, Generation Ready will be working with the district um, with a six hour module, but then they'll be coming back at night to do some work with the board for two hours as well. Um, you mentioned that there were 35 members of the committee. How um, are those members then spreading what they have learned toward to the other faculty members who are not on the committee. Right, so we're certainly not to that point yet, but mm -hmm. once we get through all of these modules, the, the idea is it's not really a train the trainer model, but we are mm -hmm. going to come up with ways where then the, the group from each building would go back and we'll figure out a way to do similar trainings. Um, the idea, it, but first off, none of these can be standalone events, right? It has to be something that is continually cycling through. Because one of the concerns we have is, I mean, it's really easy to say, oh, let's have a bookshelf in our library where we have, you know, diversity books. And it, it, it might look good, but if it's not, it, it's fake, right? It's not, it has to permeate through what we do. It can't just be like the token bookshelf or we're going to do this one token book in English class each year because we want to be able to check off the equity box. There's a lot more to it than that. And that's really some of the things that we're starting to learn through this work. So it's going to be a, a long, slow process to get it to the point where it becomes just part of the fabric of what we do, because it has to permeate curriculum, it has to permeate our professional development, it has to permeate the discussions that we're having on a daily basis. Um, so this is just the start of that work, and we know that the folks that are part of this initial committee are gonna have to go out and sort of 
spread the word to others. Um, but we're, I think we're still going to have to also work with organizations to help us do that as well, though. All right, thank you for yeah. all this work. I know it is a, a lot of extra work, but um, it's important. We appreciate it. I know, I know Charmaine's not here, but I know she would love this presentation <laughs> because she worked really hard to ensure that the <laughs> district was going to include diversity for students that are not your typical Bethlehem student and representative of the different countries that we may not even have here in the district. But what I thought was really good about the presentation, I didn't look at it from that standpoint, is pe hiring people, or that's pretty much the start of changing the traditional mindset of who we have teaching in our, our classrooms and the fact that we're actually thinking about that and being cognizant of who we're hiring and that it's okay to be different and bring different ideas and that's not a bad thing because in the private sector, businesses, that's where they stop growing is because they hire the same type of person that they've, been, uh, they've had for the last 50, 60 years, however long the business has been in business and, and you just can't grow and change and be profitable if you have the same mindset. So I was really happy to hear that we were looking at that from that perspective. And also having somebody come through and assess and see what kind of materials that we have that are representative of the students in our school and those that aren't. I think that that's great because we are in a very small area and it's not representative of the real world at times and not everybody has the opportunity to see what the world is like when they're here going to school and it's, it's helpful to have an idea of what they're, they can expect where they end up. So thank you for all the work. I think it's going to be great. Anyone else have any questions or? Discussion. Thank you again for the presentation. Next up is recognition of visitors on an agenda item. At this time, if we have anyone in the audience who would like to come up and speak to the board on an agenda item, uh, now is the time. Next, uh, item six, action items, uh, finance action items. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following finance action items, one through two. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That passes. Professional personnel action items. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following professional personnel action items 1 through 12. So, so moved. moved. Any, di any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Passes. C, support personnel action items. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following support staff action items 1 through 19. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That passes. Uh, D, other action items. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following action items one through two. So moved. Second. All in, uh, any discussion? I, I had a question um, about policy 4850, instructional activities involving animals. <laughs> I just was, um, just for my own clarification, the last sentence says that the opt-out shall be provided to students and then says shall be shared with parents. Is there, who's, who's doing the sharing with the parents? Does the so opt-out go to students and then separately to parents? It would, it would be both, so it would go to parents and students. So this is a policy that when we were reviewing our policy manual, um, we did not have, and it's a required policy, so we haven't had it to do this. So um, moving forward, it would go to students and also to the families. Go to both. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Any other discussion or questions? 
All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That passes. Uh, next up is recognition of visitors on a non-agenda item. At this time, if we have anyone in the audience who would like to uh, come up and speak on a non-agenda item. Come on up to the microphone and if you could just state your name for the board. Uh, good evening, Superintendent Monroe, Dylan Baugh, and the rest of the board. My name is Robert Hussar. I'm the father of four students in Bethlehem, one that recently graduated, but the other three are currently here. And I'm calling, I'm here before you today to talk about the current policy of uh, denial of medical exemptions as it relates to the new changes for vaccines. I uh, understand that this is a late breaking issue with the state passing a new law and releasing emergency regulations. Perhaps there may be some confusion about how it's being rolled out. Um, but I just have some questions about um, whether or not you have an actual policy in place that uh, deals with the approval or denial of medical exemptions. I'm not sure if anyone can answer that or how I might go about finding if one does exist or and or how I can get my hands on one. So there's no policy on it. We're just following the guidance that came out. The legislation. You're following the legislation and regulations, yep. but you have no policy beyond that? No. Nope. Okay. Um, you, you should be aware um, that in practice, and again, since there's no policy in practice, that medical exemptions are being denied by the school physician, uh, school district physician, with, as far as I can tell, no legal authority for him to do so, overruling even the personal physician of the students who has had years of personal experience with those individuals. My reading of the statute and regulations, and I know we have some attorneys on the board here that um, dabble in this area as well, um, but that the authority is being exceeded by what's been set forth. Um, and as an extension of that, that the school district is excluding or threatening to exclude individuals with as little as two days notice um, based upon these denials of medical exemptions that have been in place for years. Um, I know the regulations and the statute that was passed was for the purpose of trying to close the loop on religious exemptions that had been in place and had been um, deleted by the state legislature for to deal with the, the recent measles uh, epidemic, which by the way has also passed, but that's an aside, uh, and is a, a, an out follow that or an out, um, a result of that, they're also attempting to tighten the regulations as it relates to medical exemptions. But in my humble opinion, uh, they're, they're doing so exceeding the regulations and students are being excluded um, inappropriately and, and illegally as a result of that. So I'd just like the board to be aware of that. would like to have the opportunity to discuss this in further detail with specifics, as I know you don't want to do that here, and would ask for an opportunity to be heard on this. Thank you for your comments, and um, I would encourage uh, encourage you to provide uh, the board with a written copy of any comments that you made tonight um, through email. Um, is probably the best way to. I will go do ahead so. Do that. Just so you're aware, time is of the essence as exclusions are happening this week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please continue to hold. <laughs> it's only night. It's one through nineteen on here. Did this one not get a number? Number thirteen. Okay. 
All right, we'll go back and. Oh, yeah, 13. No, that's okay. Thank you for pointing that out. We're going to go back to support personnel action items um, because of a um, numbering error. It's in fact 20 items instead of 19. So if we can do that one again, uh, just to make sure that we cover everybody. Yeah, there's just a error yeah. the numbering between items 13 and 14. Where they should have yeah. been. Yeah, so there's just labels. 14 should actually be 15. So it is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following support staff action items 1 through 20. So um, moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That passes. Future meetings um, tomorrow. Thursday, September 19th at 5.30 p.m. Uh, the board is having its uh, retreat. Uh, and just, again, to reiterate, uh, we'll be getting a presentation um, from Generation Ready. Um, on Wednesday, October 2nd, is our next board meeting. Um, that's at Slingerlands Elementary School. And the regular board meeting is at 7. We're anticipating executive session starting at 6. The meeting following that is on October 16th at the middle school. Um, is that correct? It's at 6 o'clock. No, it should be okay. 6 and 7. The regular board meeting at 7 and anticipated executive session at 6. And the meeting following that, Wednesday, November 6th, is at Eagle Elementary School starting at 7, the anticipated executive session at 6 o'clock. We also have an audit committee meeting on Monday. Right, we have audit committee uh, Monday. Yes, thank Monday. you. The audit committee and, and, policy, and committee. policy committee are both meeting on Monday uh, at the high school. I also, can we just confirm that there were no other visitors who wanted to speak on a non-agenda item? I feel like... Okay. Thanks. Uh, seeing no reason to go into executive session, um, can we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Somebody else so moved. <laughs>